Ooh. Ooh. Oh my God, Lana. That's such a gorgeous and fabulous fan that you have. I wonder where you could have gotten it from. Well, Logan, if you must know. I, I must home, know. I came home from work the other day and found this amazing package at my door. And inside oh. was this beautiful purple fan. And do you oh, know wow. Who, and you know who gave me this beautiful, amazing purple fan? Who, Lana? You must tell me. It's my husband, David. <gasps> That's me. That's you. He sent me this for Valentine's Day, along okay. with a lot of other little special treats. And I say, and I thank you. Oh, we're already and I didn't getting get a goddamn thing, thing from either of these people. Well, maybe well. I'm kidding. Actually, they're both doing me a huge favor by covering for me next weekend on the podcast. <laughs> but that's all I need. <laughs> Because, yes, for the Dragged In viewers, I'm taking a vacation and I'm going to... Nah, I can't say I'm going to get sleep, actually. That would... I don't know whether I will get sleep. But anyway, hello, hi, and Mabu, hey. hey. And welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where we put the real and the tea in reality. And you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm Logan Murphy, a Say Something Gay. Gay. Um, I am drinking just some water, but today I'm drinking lemon water Ooh. because I had a lemon that was going to go bad if I left it any longer, so I put it in my water. <laughs> Wonderful. And now I'm going to do what David was doing. <laughs> well, I'm David Healy, and I don't have a cute intro, but I do have a cute shirt. Um, I am wearing my Ben de la Creme shirt. Hmm, I wonder why I chose this one. Um, oh, wow. And I am drinking some water. And I... Thank you. I forgot. Oh. You still did, even after Lana just... I'm not going to... Nope. And hello, Whatever. everyone. I'm back. I'm here again. It's me, Lana, your resident evil diva. Here to give the tea spill the tea and drink the tea because you know. I love me some tea. Her. And if you have some tea, you know what to do. Hit me up. I am drinking strawberry sunkiss because why not? It's my favorite. Wow. But if I was drinking anything else, I would be drinking it out of my cup mug. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Pan off a la cup mug. Pan off a la cup mug. Beer, 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 beer. I and don't have anything can... currently in mind, so I can just go. Me too. Beer, 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 beer. You can get your cup mug or any of our cup merch at lanajuicecreations.etsy.com. The link will be in the description below. And we do ship internationally and domestically here in the U.S. So there are no excuses. And Philippines, Philippines, Philippines. I'm looking at you. Philippines. Per. David is not Thank you. Thank you. And I thank uh, you. Thank David. you. <laughs> there, well, I you forgot very... to. <laughs> I said it already. I didn't need to say it again. Lana already said it. She didn't need to say it again. I said it already. That's why I said it at the beginning so I wouldn't have to say it again because I forget sure. later on. But, but we, are all, we are all finally back together. Yay. To do the world's shortest recap of yeah. Drag Den. Not because the episode wasn't good, because this was maybe my favorite episode of the season so far, honestly. Um, but more so because it's very late, and we just did a, another two-hour recording before this, and we're all very tired. But we're going to sufficiently and expertly talk about this episode of Drag Den. As Absolutely. people who are not Filipino, uh, for the world. Absolutely. But we'll first. see if it's short, though. <laughs> but first, you know, we keep is, saying it's short. It's not. Gonna We're going to do it as short as we possibly can. But first, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to our main channel. Subscribe to our Eurovision Song Contest 
channel. If all of these things entertain you, which apparently we do because you're here and we appreciate you being here. So subscribe to this channel, that channel, and that channel. And we put out content all the thing, all the time about almost all things that's drag related, that's reality TV related, and song, your vision song content related. So do the things. Hit the buttons. Follow us. Share. All those things. And if you want to join our membership channel, the Tea Room, please go to our main channel. Hit the join you get some this is the main channel because we're here so you're so used to doing that on the cup tv and i know exactly what mindset you're in right now because you're so used to hosting on the tv channel but you yep. have to stay to go to the main i understand it's late too y'all so so here's the, the main channel button. hit the join button down below do that join the team room get some exclusive we're content also on or go to our i was about to say it give me a chance Go to the Patreon. Same content, but, you know, different platform if you like. So do all those things. And then thank you. And and I thank you. Now, Dragged In. Dragged In. Dragged In. It's episode five. Mm -hmm. uh, we're coming back. Lana, did you want to share any quick thoughts on last week's episode? Um, It was a good episode. The person, Jean, I love Jean. I was very much a Jean defender because I thought they treated you poorly, even though you were acting in some of your things, you know, whatever, whatever. Everybody's acting. They're all acting. They're on TV. We're all acting. Um, but they just got mad at you. Um, Jean went home. Unfortunately, it was deserved with the outfit, the the performance. Deserved. It was deserved. But or as they said today, deserved, deserved all in unison. All in, yes. <laughs> like, I will talk about them. I'm gonna talk about them when we get back to them. But yeah, it was a it was a good episode. I did enjoy it. Um, and but Jean, I I do still think you have a lot of room to grow, and you can be an amazing queen. And I'm I was very sad to see you go, but I was happy that you went out in a very nice form for yourself. So. And who won that drug daggy on for you? And the drag Dagulon was was it did Miss Tan win that? Yes, Mrs. Tan. She did. Who, who do you that? think won that drag Dagulon? Who do I think? Oh, I actually think Jean won. Thank you. Jean. We also said that because I actually, she I did do. a great job. I thought Jean won the drag Dagulon, and that's why I was like, "Oh, is she about to save herself? That'll be great. That'll be so amazing." Because I thought she won, but no, they thought Miss Sand won. And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, all right." But that's my thoughts. Lip sync assassin, Mrs. Tan. Yeah. Who would have? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Um, we come in this funeral procession for Jean Velot was. Nasty. They were dancing on her grave. <laughs> Maybe it was a Mardi Gras over there. With everyone else, they were like, "Oh no, Marilyn's gone. Oh no, Maria. Jean's gone. Jean's gone. Jean's gone." We were having a whole Mardi Gras parade over over Jean Lee, but I was like, "Yo, that's so cool. deserve, deserve, <laughs> deserve, deserve." I was like, "I need to get a sound clip of that." <laughs> I think we do. I also will need uh, potentially an updated Drag Dagula Na button because the way Manila said it in this episode where she was like, Drag Dagula Na! I was yeah. like, I love that. <laughs> and I need that in my life. So, um, but yes, they're dancing on her grave. Poor no Jean. one is really all upset to see her go. Um, she even wrote a lovely note and they were just like, whatever. I was just like, the crowns Girl, you know what the fuck she's trying to say. You no, know she was saying queens. Y'all know she was saying queens. Why y'all acting so? I ain't like that. I was like, y'all. In so this cool. moment, I was like, okay, I feel bad for Jean. And I, I will say, Jean, Jean, the, per Jean the person outside of this show, I think is lovely and wonderful and incredibly talented. Jean, the character on this show, wasn't always the biggest fan of. I was a fan. But of I like Jean. Jean. I and was I'm a fan of Jean. I liked Jean. I thought she was wonderful. And I defended Jean on this podcast several times. Yes. And I will continue to do that because I thought they were very petty and very rude to her when it wasn't deserved all the time. Well, and I'm mostly making it known that I do think Jean is very lovely and wonderful because I was me recently made aware of the fact that she does watch this podcast. So, hey, Jean. Hello, hey, Jean. I have Thank nothing you. to be worried about with you because I am your fan. Me neither. Oh, Except I hope... the low score I gave on uh, 
only so, deserves things when she deserved. Like I was very fair yeah. with Jean. Oh, I know she if she ever comes on here, she's gonna try and read me. And I think that's just gonna be a lovely, Ooh, beautiful exchange. I so I can't it. wait, Jean. I, I can't you. wait, girl. I'm excited. <laughs> and read Logan for filth, Jean. Oh, it, oh you won't she won't be able to, honey. No. Because you won't be here. You'll be scared. Tucking your tail between your legs. <laughs> Now I'll probably be out doing something more important than talking to Jean Vallone. I'm Ooh. kidding, Jean. I love you. Anyway, um, Sassy Girl comes in. That's the girl. Okay, Sassy Girl looking like hey. a school girl. Sassy Girl. I have the photo for later. Don't worry. I have it. Um, but she comes in and we get another gay. Mm. That's my that favorite really thing. Is I well, that really is not working for me. I'm like, yeah. it, that's not what they say in Tagalog, but I'm like, I love it. Gay. Mm. Mm. <laughs> for us with English, for us with English subtitles, it literally comes through as game, but with a G A Y. I was like, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not gonna happen. Like that's what it really is for me. Like, fair enough. Gay. Mm. I'm like, gay. Mm. Gay. Mm. <laughs> Anyway. Yes. Um. So uh, we get their game, and we're making posters oh. about inclusivity. What is that? To which? What is that? Hmm? What's inclusive? Insecluvity. Insecluvity. What's insecluvity? <laughs> Russia <laughs> Fox does not miss with these one-liners. And she, yeah. for me, what I'm realizing, I think the reason I like Russia Fox so much is because she reminds me of these characters that we see on drag television shows, a la Alyssa Edwards, where I don't think she knows how funny she actually is, but everything that comes out of her mouth is just a one-liner, like, it's just one-liner gold. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what I really enjoy about her. I'm like, I just don't know if she knows the, how funny she is, but I enjoy her not knowing that she's as funny as she is. And people, like the other contestants, when they talk about all the weird things she's doing, it's so entertaining to, like when Margot was describing uh, the whole hospital <laughs> story that Russia had, and then we're going to get another one a little bit later on that had me cracking up. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. It's so good. But we're doing our posters. We're talking about life growing up. We're talking about life changes. We get a lot of, I will say this episode made me cry on several occasions. I was like, drag Dan, I don't need you to do this to me today. It was a nice change of pace after the drama of last week. I will say that, but I was like, oh, Dragged In, you need to not do this to me today. Because we get a little bit about Russia's upbringing um, here. We get more later. Um, and then we also find out that Jean, or not Jean. Margaret. Me with Jean on the mind, um, as always. She stays rent-free in my mind. Um, Margot uh, has detransitioned. Mm-hmm. Um, because of, I don't remember exactly what she said. I think it was because of like the, the danger of being trans. There was, they were it's talking a, about Sochi. It was like a whole discussion around all of that. Yep. Specifically, it was, uh, when she started transitioning, uh, she met her girlfriend, Mm -hmm. And uh, just the idea of a trans woman and a woman, like a cis woman, being together was socially unacceptable. So she had to detransition um, specifically so she could be with her girlfriend at the time, um, which is kind of crazy to think about. And it was that, and, and then she was like the acceptance of um, from family and from people who they knew. So it was like, and she was, she also did say that um, being turning, uh, going through the transition was she was at, when she when she decided to go against it and de uh the uh, de transition right de transition. I don't know why that wouldn't come out of my mouth, but. When she decided, it's okay, Russia. Right. <laughs> I know, right? 
um, when she decided to detransition, she was like, it's so much going on with trans people right now. It probably is for the best for her to just detransition instead of yeah. going through and fighting that, you know, fighting that uphill battle alongside with what it does for her and for her girlfriend in this situation. It, it puts a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think she just was like, it's just much too much to do it right now. And I would rather just not, and then yeah. maybe re, uh, come back, circle back, if you will, circle back to it mm-hmm. later and go through it. But still, I found that to be so interesting. And like, cause you don't hear a lot of people who talk about detransitioning because it's like, once they get to that point to start the transition, they're in it. They're there. They're like, we will complete this, you know, this transition is going to happen. So it's very rare that you hear people who say, I got into it and then I had to step back. But it's probably more common than we know that it's probably a lot of yeah. people who do it. Mm-hmm. It's just I, not. I was going to say, I was going to say, and we hear a li- we've heard a little bit more of that over the last couple of years and like mm-hmm. not to get political, but the American right uses mm-hmm. that as a, as a big talking point um as to what transitioning is like horrible and trans people are horrible which obviously hi we don't share those thoughts here mm-hmm. um i i i know someone who was transitioning and then detransitioned and mm-hmm. i think what the what and what uh he has talked about in that is and he he him are the pronouns that he chooses to use at this point in his life mm-hmm. but um what he said is there's such a beauty in the entire trans experience that like living through that realizing it's not necessarily what i need for myself at this moment in my life but still Mm. recognizing that you know that is not not a part of me that is a part of me it's just it's not where i need to be on my trans journey right now Mm -hmm. and even margo was talking about that as well being like every time i get into drag it's a little bit of a way of me reclaiming um, and express outwardly expressing my trans identity. And Absolutely. at the end of the day, girl, as long as you are secure exactly. in yourself and your gender identity at this Absolutely. moment, and it's not causing you any sort of dysphoria that we know of, and as long as you're happy, girl, do whatever you need to in your journey of transness. Mm-hmm. And I hope that the people around you, whenever you, if if and when you ever decide to fully go through with it, I hope that the people around you are as supportive as they can be for you as a human, regardless of where you are in your trans journey. Mm -hmm. And also like we just talked about this with a different show recently about the idea of passing or not. Mm -hmm, And, you know, at at this point in Margot's life, uh, she, she's made the choice to not present female uh, in her everyday life but she made it pretty clear that it's something she wants to do eventually. Mm-hmm, yeah. So for me, you may not be passing, but I see you as a woman, girl. You made oh, it very yeah. clear. You're a woman to me, and I see you. And you made that point. You said, why would I want to transition right now when trans people are still being murdered? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I hope that ends soon. But either way, I see you for who you are. Exactly. And even in, in, in any journey in life, and, and that's the last thing I'll say, any journey in life, we have the we have the option to say, you know what, this isn't where I thought I wanted to, where I need to be right now. Yeah. And so she could have got into the transition and was like, or this is for anything we do. We can get involved and start something and realize, you know what? Maybe this isn't the right thing for me right now. Not saying no, I will no never. No journey is linear. Absolutely. And no journey has to be forced. No journey has to be what other people expect of you. Your journey is your journey. And it can be whatever you want it to be. And it can take as long as you want it and need it to be for you. She can be on this journey for the rest of her life in in, in her ripe old golden age of 70-something. Decide, you know what? I want to do the transition and do it. Mm-hmm. Whatever you decide to do and as long as whatever, how long it takes for you to decide or, or figure out your journey, Figure it out. Take the time and do you, boo. It's you. It's perfectly fine. As like you said, as long as you're happy in your gender, 
uh, experience and on that journey, do it. There's a, there's a, and I don't, I don't want to speak for trans people here, but there is a difference between mental transness and mm. like medical transness. Mm. And not mm -hmm. every trans person is going to go through a medical transition. But as long as you know who you are and you're secure in that, that's all that fucking matters. Period. So, we love you, Margo. We love, we love you, Margo. Margo. Well, I have a lot to say about Margo say, later, too. I will <laughs> have a lot to say about Margo as well. Um, but then me, shall too. We... <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. We all uh, need to talk about Margo often. <laughs> yep. The we only other thing that about they... Margo, no, no, <laughs> no, we are going to talk about Margo. All right, go ahead, David. The only other thing that came up um, before we got to the um, the main stage was a little teaser for what's to come. We hear the people talking about oh, Russia's do always doing the most. She's working on three posters when everybody else is working on one, and we will talk about that more soon. <laughs> <sighs> Baby. Um, yeah, we will definitely talk about that. I have boy. thoughts. Let's <laughs> go talk about some things then. Yay! As per usual, we must Sassy start girl. with our Sassy Girl slide. <laughs> Period. Yes, Sassy Girl. You will never be forgotten ever, ever again. Sassy no. Girl looking, looking schoolish and beautiful all at the same time. And we Work got girl. a bag man in there too. Hey, bag man. We see hey. you. There was I one of the bag men that was like walking in with like a specific swagger in this episode. And I was like, oh, who are you? <laughs> Dra Drag Den, if you're listening, hi, Drag Den. Um, can when you post uh on Instagram uh like photos or videos or whatever with the bag men, can you please tag them? So some people, I'm not saying me, but so that some people could maybe, you know, thirst follow them on Instagram. It would be very appreciated. Thank you very much. It's me. I'm people. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It, don't you love this cute little collage that I made? It's very cute. Thank it's you. very cute. Thank you. Um, like, oh, wait. Did you get this from someone or did you do this? Oh, no, baby. I made this. Work, work, work. You can tell because the photo quality is shit. <laughs> but you ate it up. Thank you. I know. Um, so we have uh guest drag enforcer Andrea Briantes, who I thought was very lovely. She's adorable. <laughs> yeah, she's uh, adorable. adorable. Pot stirrer. We'll yeah. talk about it. We will talk I about love that. her. We will talk about I, that, this girl. Mm -hmm. I love her for that. Um, and then our drag agent on duty is Shawarma. Yay. I love Shawarma. I was so happy to see Shawarma. Mm -hmm. She was not my favorite on her season, but she was perfectly lovely in this episode. Yeah. A completely different side of her. Uh, Very much different. softer side to Shawarma. I, I really think she, she was like, uh, she took her job there very seriously. And I thought she was very overall, like very um, intellectual with the way that she went about her judging and the way that she was critiquing these girls. Cause it seems like she probably knows a lot of them very personally. Um, Cause she was bringing in a bit of that personal touch, like specifically, I think talking about Margot and I think Russia as well, I think at certain moments. Um, and then Nicole is back. I'm so happy that Nicole is back. Um, I loved, Oh no, I don't remember her name. Oh no. Hold on. Megan, I loved Megan last week, but I was very happy to see Nicole back. And mm -hmm. I really like this Manila look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like her other look in this episode better, but I do like this look from Manila. At first I was like, oh, is she holding it? That's cute. But then when she mm -hmm. walked, put a hand in, I was like, oh no, that's just up. I love it. That that's made it just, better for me. Yeah. And then our theme... Miss Intrams. So we are doing theme wear based on pageants held during school intramurals throughout the Philippines. I love I intramurals. Think that's very fun. Did you do intramurals? Because I did. I did do intramurals. Per. I did basketball intramurals. Of course. I did. I did rugby. 
And well, I did basketball, and I was there for the flag football one. I was. I attended I was flag present. football. Right, I was present during the. Flag I did not football. play. I was not running, and <laughs> was not no, running. no, and my then, my. My fraternity in college had enough uh, ex high school football players that like I didn't need to. Hence, why we won. I think the first four years that we were on campus. <laughs> yeah, my my I went to all girls school and we did um flag football and I didn't want to play because we would play in the field where our horses would do their thing. They the equestrians would would you know, what practice and things. And so I was like, I don't want to run on that field because what if you miss something and I don't want to step in it. So no, thank you. Even though they claim they clean it up all the time, but I don't trust it. <laughs> you know, that's fair. Yeah, I don't trust it. Fair enough. David. Did you play for meals? I'm allergic to sports. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the exact answer I thought you would give. <laughs> you don't. You didn't play any sports at all. <laughs> I'm just mentioning it. it makes mm -hmm. sense. I get it. Sorry. Football. <laughs> ba basketball. Mm -hmm. Bowling. <laughs> Gymnastics! Woo! Wait, stop killing my husband! I have to have him stop. You can't kill him. Ooh. He's dying over here. <laughs> David, come back. We won't talk about it anymore. Synchronized swimming! <laughs> oh, my cat's very concerned. She saw me pass oh, out. No, no, she comes, no, well, she's so biting good. my arm. Look, look at her. Look oh, at her. She no. does this when she thinks. I'm like sick or dying. She will come bite me to revive oh, me. Oh no! I'm okay. I'm okay. I promise you. Oh, He's God. okay, Lily. He's okay. Thank He's you. all right. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> well, at least you know if something ever happens to you, Lily will try to get you up. We we'll appreciate it. Her in the bottom corner of the corner is right now is it's everything. She okay. just wants to make sure. Okay. Remember when we said this was going to be the shortest recording ever? <laughs> Smile. Okay, let's move let's, on. First up, Siva Fatal. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. So I don't remember. It was She was doing a martial art, I think, if I remember yes. right. And she yes. had on this like big blue coat on. Yep. And this was the reveal underneath. Yep. Yeah, exactly right. Uh -huh. Not my favorite. I I mean, it wasn't my favorite, but I didn't think she looked bad by any means. Um, I think I did like the puffer coat that she came out in better than what it revealed into. But she looks so like hot to me still. Like I thought her makeup was stunning. Um, I really liked the and, and I'm talking about her and drag right now. Not no, she's not really hot. Her. She's really hot. Um, I like the knee pads too. I thought those were cool. Like alternative for a boot <laughs> um but yeah I, I mean i really like i didn't hate it by any means i thought it it was good it just most of them were were better than good so <laughs> right, right i mean like it wasn't my favorite i think she still looks pretty like gorgeous face still like yeah i agree she is hot she, she is hot but it just wasn't the best look when you stand it next to everybody else mm-hmm yeah, I I don't know what the, the the traditional like sport garb is supposed to look like, but while she had it on, you could see everything going on underneath with this red garment. And then when she turned around, I was like, oh, like I and again, I don't know the cultural reference, so I, for me, it just bothered me seeing the reveal before we got the reveal. I'm just looking at it from like a traditional drag sort of sense, at least like my Americanized drag sense. I just didn't like that we could see the reveal before the reveal happened. That was all it was for me. I thought that was deliberate um, though, because it was such a clear opening in the back was, and she bent over so everybody could see it. I think it was. And that's why like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not mad at, at that per se. I just, you know, it's fine. Scores. 73. 60. 
Oh, I like this more than both of y'all. I gave her a 76. <laughs> okay, then. That was my favorite. Next up, Moy. Okay. This is my favorite Moy episode. I'm going to get that out of the way because I've, I've had the same kind of complaint as Manila. She's just been kind of safe like throughout the competition and hasn't really stood out. I've said that consistently. She stood out this week and I thought this was a really clever look. Um, first of all, I like the basketball like boob cups there and then the using the basketball net as the dress was so clever. I really like that. Um, I her think makeup Nicole looked good. Also, I think Nicole also had that as part of her skirt. I think I noticed that. Oh, really? I think so. I it. it looked like she had some sort of detail like that. Sorry. I just thought about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I like her makeup. I like the wig a lot. Just I'm getting full drag from this. Like this was one of the most draggy looks of the night. I like this look. I thought she did well with it. She, I was like, I know exactly what it is. She's a basketball player. I love it. Love the basketball boob cups. Like you said, I love the net. I thought that was very cute. I love the orange wig that goes. That's the best. I just, I think she just hit it, hit it out the park today. This, this was the outfit that I was like, yep, I get it. I like it. I respect it. And it looks good on her. So, I still, I'm still not a fan of her breastplate, but it can't really tell that much. I think she it blended in a little bit better around, but it's still good. It's still good. I liked it. <coughs> oh Lord, I was so. <laughs> That's what I think about. No, uh, I was so happy. I was so happy for my one team member. I was so happy for my one team member that I still have. Moy is holding it down for me. It's moi and moi, and I love her. Um, I thought this was so smart. Um, using the hoop as a skirt, I think here is so cute. Otherwise, I mean, it's a bra, a panty, and this like kind of varsity sweatshirt over thing. So like, I'm not mad at the look. Um, I think it's really cute for moi. Mm -hmm. Scars. 85. I gave it 84. I gave it a 79. Ooh. Well, I guess we like it more than you do. Mm -hmm. Maybe she shouldn't so. be on your team. You don't deserve her. More on more. <laughs> can you let me have my one person? You can have more. You can have more. I'm doing really bad in this draft. Okay, David, you can give me <laughs> one thing. Thank you. Thank you. you can't give me a Valentine's Day gift, but you can give me this. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Deja. Deja. Tennis. Yeah, I thought this was really cute. Like, and I, I like the colors. Now I'm wondering, like, so I, are they going for, like, the tennis ball color? Is that why this kind of, because I think that's more yellow. But that's, it's weird that we got the same color yeah. for both tennis looks. Yeah. Um, I'll just get this out of the way. Clearly, this is the better of the two looks. Um. It gave me kind of like, this could be somebody in the world of Clueless, like playing tennis, coming oh, out, okay. dressed in this. Um, and I also thought it was very interesting. She talked about how uh, tennis is not very accessible in the Philippines uh, to people like her. So I was like, okay, I didn't I didn't know that. Like, I, I mean, I'm used to just whoever wants to play tennis here can go to some park and there's a tennis court. <laughs> um but yeah, I, I thought it was a really good look for her for sure. I mean, let's as tennis is not one of those sports that you just pick up and just go do. And if we've seen a lot of people like on the tennis circuit, it is not a lot of Filipino people who play that play tennis. That's not a sport that is big in, in that country, and we don't get a lot of stars come out of that country that play Philippines, not d directly from Filipino. Now you got Filipino people from like Filipino American mm -hmm. or, you know, who, you know, family's been here, but they, you don't get a lot of people straight out of the Philippines going to play tennis. So I get it. And if we want to be honest, tennis is kind of like had 
or had been before a very rich person's sport. Like everybody, it's a very elitist, have, elitist, kind very of elitist right sport, and a lot, a lot of people could play tennis, and it really, so you know, not, not. I get it, I get it, and I understand it. But I love this look on her, though. I do. I think it, as you said, it was definitely better than the the other tennis look that we're going to get to. I like how she styled it. I like the jacket, and I now I can't unsee the girl from Clueless. Um, some girl from Clueless going out to play tennis in something like this like it's cute it's like it's like one of those the girls who go skiing who you know is never going to get on skis but they go because they got the cute outfit that they can sit and lodge in that's what that's giving she's probably never going to actually play tennis or break out in the sweat in tennis but she's going to go and put on her cute little tennis skirt and go out there she's Where, standing next to amber when amber says i can't play because i, I have those I yep. <laughs> absolutely she's like me too, <laughs> me too. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely so yeah but i like this look i think this is just so stupidly gorgeous stupidly gorgeous like look at that face Ugh, i'll Stand next to her while we don't play tennis together. I'll do that with her. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy this as well. Um, definitely the better of the two tennis looks. Um, I thought this was very well thought out. It's a simple sort of A-line dress with this corset top and the jacket. And the way she presented it was so smart, too. Having all the balls in her crotch region, um, I think, was very smart. Uh, in this case, I love this like almost Ariana Grande ponytail situation going on with the visor with her name on it. It's just, it's so cute. Good. Scores 80. I gave it 83. We're back on track, everyone. I gave it an 87. <laughs> <laughs> We're back on track. Work. Man. Next up, Margo. Uh, this was an interesting one because my score definitely changed the more I looked at this uh, because there were so many tiny details that I just really appreciated um, because at first I'm like, okay, it's, it's pretty simple um, silhouette. It's, it's not what you would think of for a sport. Um, but then I saw like that kind of like tied together slit on her skirt and I'm like, okay, I like that. And then the chest pieces that are just sticking out on her chest. And then the the earrings with the chest pieces. And then what really got me were her nails. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I like this. So it just kept going up and up. I'm, I thought this was a very solid look for her. And very out of the box, which I appreciated. I love this look. When she walked, when it turned the corner, I was like... Oh, my God. No, she did not. First of all, you came with chess as a sport, and I appreciate that because chess is a sport, and it does to be recognized as a sport. It's very intellectual sport. It's not everybody can do it. Not everybody can play it, and I appreciated that for um, Margot to do that. Then... Yeah. Can I just say, I, w while you're on that subject, I loved when one of the judges said, you're the only queen that chose an intellectual sport. And she said, I'm the only intellectual queen. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say that, but just step oh, right over I'm me. Sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I was only doing that because you do, you do, Logan does it. To, you do it to Logan all the time. I wanted to be like, I was going to say that, David. But. <laughs> David. <laughs> David, no, no, but no, I love that. Do we gotta that redo the puppet favorite. challenge with how we're doing our damn uh, impressions right now? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no puppets. I've got a few winning, winning puppet. I, I mean, it, 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 it is award winning, but we've gone a long time without seeing puppets. I don't want to talk about puppets. So, oh, don't worry, Lana. They're coming pretty soon for you. <laughs> Anyway, but then, like you said, all the details of this look, the chest pieces, the earrings, the the board she brought out when she was like, checkmate, bitches, and then her nails, and it was, everything about this look was so good to me. I enjoyed it so much. 
I was like, okay, Margo, you're doing it this. You're doing it for me right now. You're doing it for me. That's it. This bitch is so stupid. This bitch is so and intellectual. She's the only intellectual. She's the only intellectual um, queen. I love this. I love every single bit of this. All of the pieces sticking off of her body. The way it's such a simple garment. But everything she's done is so intentional, except for not having a left earring. What if it fell off? Well, this is her official photo, so you know. Yeah, I think she did. She did have two on at one point. <laughs> Probably, so I, guess it fell I don't off. know. Um, the hair, of course, hair is incredible, but that's her thing. So yeah, obviously, uh, I love this. Skies eighty one. I gave this a 93. I gave it a 90. I loved it. <laughs> so good. Next up, Russia Fox. Russia Fox is crazy in the best way. <laughs> crazy like a fox, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I really love this wig. Like just seeing just this long trailing wig as she was walking, I, I, I enjoyed that. I thought weightlifting was such a clever idea here, but then when she came out and then the spark started shooting out of the dumbbell or the barbell and out of her chest, I was like, Come on, girl, you do not settle for anything less than like full throttle. I really like this. This is probably my favorite and largely due to the presentation because the look itself is a little simple, but just the way she delivered it was so good. Did y'all get the reference she was making here? Just tell us. <laughs> okay. So she, uh, they mentioned her several times by name, but I think she was referencing uh, Hidalene Diaz, who is um, a two-time Olympic record holder in weightlifting for the Philippines. Because I remember distinctly watching the 2020 Olympics when it happened and remembering all of the announcers being like, records are being made in the women's, I think it was 55 kilogram, something like that. Yeah. Um, 55 kilogram, um, I think deadlift is what she does, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Um, so she's a very revered figure amongst, um, Filipinos. So I think that was like the, I think that was the direct reference that Russia was making. Okay. Um, for me, this look wasn't my favorite look at all. I was kind of like, it's, it's too, it was very simple. It was very simple. Um, the props itself, the presentation, great. It was a great presentation. I will agree. It was, it was like, whoa, didn't expect sparkles but there we go we got sparkles but i'm so used to seeing better from russia i feel like she set the bar high for herself that she didn't meet it for me this time and that's on her that's her fault you set the bar high for yourself girl so i expect a whole lot from you every single week and this wasn't just this wasn't the week do i lo i love i'm a fan of this wig though fan of the wig great wig the look itself just too simple for me, but it was all. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. It was just simple. It was just simple. I like it. I think I agree. The garment itself is is very much so on the simple side. I think the details again. Russia with the details, I think, is really what's coming through for me. The detailing of having the sparklers on her uh, on her clivage. And having the um, the the barbell, I think all of those details brought the performance up for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my favorite thing Russia has ever worn, but I think it's a pretty solid look, all things considered. So. Mm -hmm. Scott, eighty nine. I give her an eighty. I gave her an eighty one. <laughs> and no, I didn't try to one up you there. I already mm -hmm. wrote it in, so I wrote it in. That. I trust you. Oh, I'm putting mine in the document as we speak because it's the easiest way for me to keep track of them now. <laughs> <laughs> and last up in theme wear, Mrs. Tan. Mrs. Tan, I'm so disappointed. I'm so, honestly, I was nervous for Deja when she was like, oh, Mrs. Tan is also doing tennis. I'm like, uh-oh, uh-oh, Deja. But 
this was no. such a miss for me. <laughs> this was such a miss. I honestly think this might be in my bottom three looks so far this season. Uh, they're just, it was just so basic, so basic. Um, even like that wig, I don't even love. So I don't know. It, the, the only thing I liked and I cannot, I cannot do it the way she did it, but she went up and said her thing. And then she said, and I, and she, she made like tennis ball sounds. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> like that, that was kind of funny, but that doesn't redeem this very basic look. Yeah, I think we've said enough. We said Deja just was the best one, and this is just not it. And I love me some Mrs. Tan. Y'all know that. I'm a fan of Mrs. Tan. But this just wasn't it. It was very much along the same lines of just basic, simple, and not even that exciting. So. I think it's simple. I think the execution of the entire ensemble, I think was very good. The reveal itself, I think was very well executed. It's a bodysuit and a ponytail and a visor. And like, I do still think what she has executed here is executed very well. It's just basic. It's it's my least favorite thing she's worn for sure. But Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Scores. I'm nervous. 45. Oh, no. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. I gave her 60. I gave this her a seven. Low average to me. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I gave her... Go ahead, Logan. No, you go ahead. Sorry. You were talking before I was. <laughs> no, yeah, I was going to say, it's simple, it's basic, but it's not horrible. It is not like no. the worst and, out in the world. And 45 is not horrible to me. Because 50 means yeah. average. So this is slightly below okay. average for me. Well, I'm not used to you giving scores on drag den this low. That's why I'm like, for the most part. So that's why right. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Lord. Um, so they bring out their posters. <sighs> and they get their critique. Please speak on it, you both. Because it just... Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean... And everybody had their posters and they're talking about their inclusivity and what this means to them and why this poster was made. And we get to Russia Fox and Russia says, I have three. And we're <laughs> like, yeah, it, it figures you would have three. <laughs> so makes get, sense. We spend this time to have Russia explain all three of her posters. And I was like, girl, you do doing too much now. I like, love it's Russia. a PowerPoint presentation. I was like, a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> no, the best part was, so before she talked about each one, it cut to a clip of Moy <laughs> saying slide one. And then it cut to a clip <laughs> of Mrs. Tan being like world peace and then it cut to <laughs> Russia Fox talking showing about world peace. And explaining <laughs> and then cut to Moy slide two <laughs> this is Tan nature <laughs> cut to environment <laughs> cut to Moy slide three Mrs. Family. Tan family, family. <laughs> and those big figures of people Oh, and I love Russia Fox and she's a pageant girl through and through and it's showing here she took this very seriously <laughs> this is why I'm telling y'all she reminds me of Alyssa Edwards because this is absolutely something Alyssa would do <laughs> she, she, she got these crap posters <laughs> with stuff just sticking everywhere and she's like World peace, <laughs> the environment, the importance of taking care of our earth, and mm. that's just like I family environment. Sort of <laughs> the stick figures of people. Just, <laughs> oh my god! I think oh. I need a sound bite of just her saying environment. <laughs> <laughs> just so, oh god, I laughed. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Are we doing this?" 
I just I love her. I love all three of them oh, for, for putting this together so well. Even though she was so sincere the whole she time. She was for real. She was serious about that. Oh God. Uh, oh God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so, so we're gonna move. Well, no, I do want to. I do want to bring up one other person uh, who had theirs. So Moy, when she was showing her, uh, her uh, poster, she got very emotional, and you could tell like how much this whole experience means to her, and especially like making these friendships with the other queens. Absolutely. And so she was tearing up, and everybody's like, "We love you," and Manila's like, "I'm so glad you're here," and it was very touching, especially like for me, like just sleeping on Moy this whole time it just felt like she's still a person and this really means a lot to her absolutely so i thought that was super sweet absolutely i thought i agree i was like oh it was just a good good wholesome moment Mm -hmm. and that she was very appreciative for being there and she met uh, some people that she is going to be friends with forever she says it's i love that it was a good moment this episode is so pure and like that that because then they're getting ready for their main drag and all of a sudden all of these men appear and i'm like who are these men and then we find out that the main drag challenge is uh, JS prom. And these are all of their prom dates. And I just start crying because Deja is talking about her boyfriend. And Mrs. Tan is talking about her boyfriend for now. And it's emotional. And then Russia is here with her stepdad. And I cried. <laughs> I cried. I cried the moment Manila said, this is going to be prom, but we're doing JS prom, and we're going to give you the experience of prom that you never had. And I was like, oh, this is going to kill me. Because we know a lot of queer people didn't experience prom the way they wanted or intended to experience prom. And it's so, and I want, oh, don't do it. Um, it's just like, I'm, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a thug, I'm not. Uh, I, told, I told my prom story a couple of weeks ago on this podcast. I don't need to do it again. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a thug, I'm not doing it. But um, yeah, it's that so many people didn't get to, they, because they weren't allowed to, because school administration wouldn't let them do it. Their parents wouldn't let them do it. Maybe, or maybe they didn't have. Uh, we weren't in that relationship with somebody who they could actually go and enjoy prom with. So whatever the reason, it's a lot of queer people who have that story about not being able to experience prom the way they wanted to. And for now, these these queens get to experience it and go back and relive this moment with people who they want to or people who they have in their lives who have meant a lot to them and it was so special. And so then when we hear all the stories about the boyfriends and the best friends and the stepfather and even the ex-boyfriend, which is not closure. Or the the closure the, it's just like, uh, it was it was very emotional. I was yeah. like, no, y'all not going to make me cry this morning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is interesting talking about prom because I'm thinking about it and Like, it it was kind of different for me because, like, the idea of going to prom with another guy for me just was never a thought, Mm -hmm. even though I was solidly gay. Like, Mm -hmm. I live, I grew up in rural Kentucky Mm -hmm. where there was never a single openly gay person in any of the schools I went to. Um, So, like, the idea of even wanting to go with the guy to prom and having that rejected like that's such a foreign concept to me because Mm -hmm. like why would i want to go to a prom with a guy like that's just so right so weird to me and in a way i guess that's kind of sad too yeah Uh, but yeah yeah i mean because it wasn't something that was like you say it wasn't something that was done where you were that just wasn't ever a, a question like you're not going to prom with another guy that was just not even brought up but 
if you were to go back in time now with with knowing all the things that you know, if somebody gave you an opportunity to relive prom, you would take another guy because mm-hmm. that's who you are yeah. and you will be so happy to do that. And so I'm yeah. like, that's the moments where I love I loved about this because I'm like, we could go back in time and relive these things and do prom how because like I didn't even go to prom with a boyfriend, I went with a friend because that was just, right. Because you know, you just go with a friend because at the time I didn't have a boyfriend and I wasn't dealing with these boys here. So I was like, I'll just go with my friend and have a good time. Did I have fun in prom? Absolutely. Had a great time with my friends, but it wasn't a thing. But if I could go back and relive it, yes, I would love to go with a boyfriend who I could go out and do my slow dance with and have that prom experience with because I didn't Mm -hmm. have that. I just had my friend and we didn't do the slow dance thing because we were friends. So it was like, that's weird. So, <laughs> you know, we just didn't do that. Yeah. Meanwhile, I was very openly gay in high school, but mm-hmm. I lived in rural Arizona where there were mm-hmm. there were a few gays. Mm-hmm. There were a couple of us in amongst the Mormons and the Cowboys and, you know, all of that. Mm-hmm. That's literally my school demographic was Mormons, Cowboys, and like a couple of gays and theater kids. Um my options, if I wanted to go to prom with another guy, my options were my ex-boyfriend or any of the other bitchy homosexuals. And I said, I'm just going to go to prom with my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, who I don't even speak to anymore. So that's fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, I, and I'm a rare case where like I was out in high school. I just chose not to go with a guy because there were not many good options mm. i didn't even go to my senior prom i only went to the junior prom because i was on prom committee, prom committee. Into- i remember you telling me that i was like i literally told the story like a few weeks ago on a podcast i do not remember the context for that but um but yeah this whole thing i was like and then uh andrea being like but is there still something there with your ex i'm like shut up andrea yeah, this was the this was a part of the episode that got me the most emotional was that Fiva oh wants to get back with her ex when I'm right here. That and you live halfway around flight. the world from this person. I get free flights, Fiva. He gets free flights, Logan. Stop this trying to make you and Fiva Fatal happen. This is the part where I know annoy Logan with my crush on Fiva. I, I look. I, I I should be jealous, but I'm not because <laughs> I just feel like you and Fiva would be just so cute, so cute, what? so cute. But I, I I I'm sorry you had to witness that. That was very uncalled for. Andrea should not be trying to hook them back up right. when they are ex for a reason, girl. <laughs> but honestly. They still like each other. <laughs> they absolutely still like each other. It was so obvious they absolutely still like each other. But she did say he, they said they just fell out of love. So I don't know. I, I I still believe in the adage you are ex for a reason. So maybe they need to stay ex and just you know be friendly. Mm-hmm. So David can swoop in. And take <laughs> anyway, but. Going to the so it was prom so we I was like okay oh uh, we, we finished that conversation finally yeah 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 it's prom Thank God. you know when you start thirsting over somebody else make sure I have to zone out of your conversation yeah okay okay great to know. but to go ahead prom <laughs> <laughs> prom should we just go to the runway absolutely. Yeah. Because this Manila look it's okay. is one of my favorite things Manila's worn all season. I like the other one better. I like the other one better, too. Whoa! But not by a lot. Not by a lot. I, I, I gave this a really high score. Okay. I gave this a really high score. I mean, um, my scores are like two points off from each other. So. Literally oh. minor two points off. <laughs> my- Mine are 11 points off from each oh. other. Oh, wow. I gave the first one an 82, this one an 80. I gave it an 80, the first one 85, and this an 83. 
Okay. I gave the first one an 83 and I gave this one a 94. Oh, wow. Look I at really, us. really like this. I like the tie as the thing that's holding up the dress. Mm -hmm. I think the, the like, black stocking, it's very different for Manila. And I think that's why I like it. Like, we don't get Manila showing a whole lot of leg all that often. Um, and especially like something like this. I have to say, though, the winner of this set of looks for me by far okay. is Shawarma. Oh. I think Shawarma looked gorgeous. I like Andrea's look. I, I think Andrea, oh, with all the silver paillettes, I thought that mm. was gorge. And I think oh the whole thing so far looks cute. It's pants. It's but no, pants. but it's like paillettes around on the oh. like. No, I'm talking about her. She's wearing pants. Oh my God. Oh, she's I, pants. oh my God, it's pants. I don't know. Oh my God, it's pants. pants. But oh my God, it's pants. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Nicole in this like neon pastel faux fur situation. I was like, yes, queen. Mm -hmm. They all look really good. They were. Yes, definitely, definitely. So let's talk about the JS prom looks. First up, Fave of Fatal. Okay. Spoiler all of these are going to be pretty high scores. Uh, I, everything is going to be 80s or higher for me for this category Same. because Same. I think everybody looked so good. Um, so yeah, I, I thought she looked stunning. This was a big step up from that first look for me. Um, and it feels like very natural too, like really natural beauty, even though like she is all dragged up. Um, I, she did have like a nude corset to it and I didn't love that part, but it wasn't super noticeable. Like even in this picture right now, it's hard to tell that it's even there. Um, but yeah, I thought she was super cute in this. And did you all think for a second that they were going to like drag up their, uh, partners? No, I definitely no. thought it was just there. They're just, he showed them putting necessary. makeup on them. So that's what made me think that. But then I realized they're just stage makeup. Yeah. yeah. They got to still look good under the lights. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought that, thought this was more like you are my date. I wanted to go as right. the queen. I am. And you were my date. I loved it. Yeah. I thought she looked st stunning. I thought she looked gorgeous. Um, I, I agree with you, David. She looks very natural. Like she's naturally beautiful in this picture. It's not like I can, I, I can, I can like, yeah, she is going to prom. She is a, not like she's a drag queen going to prom. She's just mm -hmm. a girl going to prom. And that's what you look like. And that she's, Stunning. It's beautiful. And this dress is gorgeous. I think they both look fantastic. I think this is one of my favorite things I've seen FIBA wear on this season, honestly. Um, the gown is gorgeous. A lot of these gowns were very similar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was kind of like the battle of like picking out some individual details. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I will say in the battle of the silver dresses on this occasion, while I do think FIVA looks really, really good in this gown, there's nothing for me that is incredibly groundbreaking about it. It's a very simple, very gorgeous silver gown amongst a sea of pretty elaborate looks overall from from everybody else really so while i don't think this is bad by any means this was my, i guess my least favorite of this of the main drag but that's not mm. going to be echoed whatsoever in my score because i gave it a high score <laughs> and speaking of scores yeah this is my lowest score of this group but it's an 82 i gave it an 85 i gave it an 87 mm -hmm. it's really good that's about right Next up, look at my baby boy right there. Look at my baby right there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I thought this was kind of the most out of the box uh, for a prom look. I, but I really love this fabric that she's using. It's so pretty. Um, and I like the idea of the two different kinds of crowns going on as well. I thought that was a really cool touch and they really do match each other very well. I think one of the judges told them that later on, that they were the best like pair visually. Um, but yeah, I thought this was really good. This is definitely my favorite night for Moy. Oh, absolutely. Moy slayed this. Moy ate this. She, she left no crumbs on the table or no, on the plate on the floor. She left no crumbs. She ate this down. I love what she did with her date. 
I loved how they performed it. I enjoyed this very much. She looks stunning in it. I, I, this dress fits her to perfection. She didn't go the same route with the silver, you know. It's good night for Moy. This was a good show for Moy. This was my favorite of the night. And I think Moy should have won this week. I said that. It's not just because she's the only person on my team and that would have gotten me one more point in the draft that I'm not going to win. Um, I was gooped when she came out in this. Uh, the thing for me, and they said this in the critique, she's the only person that matched what she was wearing to what her date was wearing. And that coordination for me really brought the looks over a lot of the other looks on this occasion. Oh, all the other looks, because this was my favorite. This headpiece with the crown and the face is everything this textile that they have going on is absolutely gorgeous i think his little headpiece is fantastic her shape is incredible this gown is incredible moy looks incredible mm -hmm. i get who moy is now i get it i've been asking for five episodes i get it this definitely gave me prom Everybody else was a date. This gave me prom. Date. These are those two weird art kids. I mean this with the most love in the world. <laughs> yes, These absolutely. are those two weird fashion art kids love who are business. like, you know what? We're going to make prom our bitch. And then absolutely. they did. Absolutely. They did. They're like, we won't win prom king or queen, but we'll be our own king and queen. And we go go. And we we'll go be best dressed. We'll be best dressed. Everybody go. They won't deny us. Like they spend the entire school year planning for prom night. That's, oh yeah, that's how what they are. They were like they decided their sophomore junior year. If this mm -hmm. is your prom, they decided that time at, we gonna go to prom together. We gonna pick out our colors. We gonna pick out what we gonna wear. We gonna pick out the designer. We gonna do that. They planned all of this and they made everything. They made everything. And they look fabulous in it. Ugh. Yeah. Scars. 86. I gave it a 95. Duh. I, I felt it coming. Duh. <laughs> it's so good. It's Duh. Like, take this whole cup, mother. <laughs> Just all of it. It's all yours. So good. Next up, we have Margo. Okay. Um, this is my favorite. I get that. This is I my get that. favorite. I get that. Go ahead, David. Okay. Well, this is interesting because we all have a different favorite then. Uh, but I do really like this. Like, I think this was actually a pretty good night overall for Margot. Um, yeah, I really like her shape here. But my favorite part is, like, I think it's a tool uh, kind of swoops mm -hmm. going all the way up. And then across her shoulder, I really yeah. like that texture that it added there. I thought that looked stunning. Uh, this is really good fabric, too. Like, there's nothing to complain about here. This this was my favorite because I was not, it wasn't lost in the sea of silver dresses. It was a different shape than all the other dresses. It was... <sighs> Oh, this is, if you were to prom down south in Mississippi, this is the kind of dress you would see the girls wearing. The slit to the thigh, the, like you said, the swoops and the fashion off the shoulder, and then this wig. Oh, my God, this wig, this do, I I felt like Manila, I was like, girl, could I please have that? Could I please have that wig? Of it course, Manila would have to dye a streak in A streak in it, but it'd still be gorgeous. But I want that wig. It's, ugh. She looks so good. And I just love this dress. This dress is everything. This is my favorite dress. I was like, work, work, work. Good night, if if they do not hire Margot to do Manila's wigs for season three, it is a shame and a travesty. Shame, shame. shame. Honestly. Shame. Um, yeah. 
Has Margot ever missed with a wig? I honestly don't think so. I don't think so. I'm not sure. I'll have to She's go missed with a couple of looks. Looks, but maybe not the wig. Please not the wig. I can't remember a wig. I love this gown. Um, I think the I love that her date as well had the little sash going on. Mm -hmm. It was like that's a little bit of something. I'll take that. It's mm -hmm. a little bit of something incorporating it all together. Um, all of the texture that the that the bottom part of this gown has is so gorgeous. I do love the way this drapes across the sol the shoulder. Not in this like even drape, but it's got a little bit of that like dip mm -hmm. over on the side with the shoulder. I I think it's a it was a I actually think it was a really nice night for Margot. Mm -hmm. And within a sea of people, like everyone did well on this mm -hmm. night. That's the problem. It's like everyone mm -hmm. did good. Mm -hmm. The whole time I was like, they can't eliminate anyone, right? They're gonna save everyone, right? Ugh. We'll talk about it. Scores. I gave it an eighty-three. Duh. Okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I, sh I should have done mine before you gave your duh because it's going to be in a little step down. I gave her a ninety-three. That's fine. I gave her a ninety-five, and you gave her a duh, so it's okay. <laughs> True. True. So. It balances out. Uh, let's see if we balance out with Russia Fox. Yeah. David, was this your favorite? It was not, but I think she looks stunning. <laughs> I think she looks wait, stunning. Wait, here. I will say this. I'm going to be transparent about my feelings. I said, if David say this is his favorite look of the night, I'm about to be like, David, I need you to be honest with yourself. <laughs> this is all about Russia Fox and you like it, Russia Fox, because we don't go know this ain't the best. You, can, you don't need to go on that rant because uh, she's not my favorite. Uh, she's not even in my top half for this uh, category. Okay. But I still really like this. Um, I do think it's a little sexy for prom. <laughs> that, that was one thing I thought of right away. And <laughs> let her let her be sexy in her prom fantasy, okay, David? Mm -hmm. okay, I am. I'm just I'm just saying, like I, I would be surprised to see this at prom. But yeah, she also relies pretty heavily on this nude underneath here. Um, I, I once again I think it's matched pretty well to her skin, but it still did detract a little bit for me. I like the lavender cape uh a lot though. I thought that was a cool touch for it. But yeah, I think she looks really good. Yeah, I, I the dress itself is very pretty, but I do think that the nude illusion underneath it distracted it more for me than it did for you. because uh, that's the first thing and the only thing I saw after it, once I it peeped, I was like, ooh. All that nude illusion, and I get why you need to have a nude illusion, but I like I didn't think she needed the full thing to be nude illusion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just like it's nude illusion all the way down to the bottom. Like you can show your legs, girl. It's okay. Like it's. I don't all think it's supposed to be a nude illusion. I think it's just the color of the fabric underneath the silver. But it looks. It's supposed to be like a nude illusion because it's supposed to look like she's not wearing anything underneath it. Yeah, I that is I, not I, the vibe I got at all from it. But it's not it's not doing it. Like I would rather her do like a little new delusion. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's just it's just too much. It's just it just gives it's 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 distracting for me. I would rather it just be very sheer if you're gonna do you know, make it more sheer towards the bottom and then put like a nude like panty like but like a, I say just wear like the thong where so it's not you don't have it on the sides. It's, yeah, I don't know. I would rather you just go all full out sexy instead of having that nude illusion there. But it's still a beautiful gown. It's still a beautiful gown, and she looks beautiful. Russia looks beautiful. Um, but that was the only thing that distracted me was that. But she looks st stunning, and I love her performance with her stepfather. Ooh. Ooh. Ugh. I really enjoyed this uh, seemingly way more than you both did. Mm -hmm. um, I I didn't take it as nude illusion. I took the top part that's a very obvious nude illusion as a nude illusion, but otherwise I took it as just this beige dress with the silver accenting and like the lavender little like sash thing on the side. I actually think this is really elegant and regal and very, like, toned down for Russia, but it's still very, like, it's very polished. 
all of the detailing with how with how everything is placed on the gown, I think is very good. It's toned down, but very polished and very executed Russia Fox. I, I, I really enjoy this. And I think my score is going to be significantly higher than you both. <laughs> I gave it an 85. I gave it an 80. I gave her a 97. Ooh. I really like this. Good. You have every right That's to good. like it. Thank That's you. Great. I was going to say it was my third favorite of the night, but that's not correct. It's my fourth. So. Next up, Dave. <sighs> When I tell you, I gasped. Oh, this was your favorite. When she came out, this is incredible. This is incredible. This, I, I'm actually kind of shocked that this wasn't a unanimous favorite for everybody. I get, I get your all's reasonings for your favorites. It might but be my, it might be my favorite. It might be half of my favorite. So dang good. Like yeah. all of the details and shapes. Like I usually, I'm the kind of person that I like to see more than just a gown. This is a gown, but this is an amazing gown. Like one of the best gowns I've seen in years. I think uh, she's so, 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 so good here. I see why she won. This alone got her the win in my book because this was my favorite look of the night and one of my favorites for the whole season. It's so good. Yeah, I might. Yeah, this tie for my. Yeah, this I had a tie for my favorite looks of the night because this was it. This her and Margot was it. Can't. This is beautiful. This is stunning. Like even with the little cutout at the hip. Oh, it's so much to look at, and so many interesting things. Just like all the the patterns just coming from one side and meeting up at this hip part. Like what? Uh, she looks stunning. She accessorized it perfectly. I love her hair. I love her makeup. She just was stunning. And they gave us, it made me feel like I shouldn't be watching their performance. Because it was like we were watching a very intimate moment between two people who was not studying that we were sitting there watching. They were like, I don't care if you're watching. It's me and it's him. And that's all that matters to us. And it was like, I felt like, oh, how beautiful this is. But maybe I shouldn't be watching this intimate mm -hmm. moment between two people. But it was so beautiful. I love this. I love this. I hate it. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, <laughs> this is absolutely fucking incredible in every possible way. This is the best thing Deja's worn on the season. I love the harness that her date has on over the suit. Mm -hmm. I think that was a really nice touch. You would. <laughs> what would <what'd> you say? <laughs> anyway. What would you say, David? I, you I would. would. Oh, okay. Harness? Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just because I have one hanging up in my closet right now doesn't mean that it's the oh, only reason I like the harness. I'm okay. telling your business on this internet. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say something. I'm not going to say that. Anyway, Please we continue don't. talking don't about Dave. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say You know what I'm going to say. Don't you know don't say it. Ah! No, exactly what you're about to say. You better not say it. <laughs> talking about the harness on the man and Deja. That's what we're talking about. Oh, it's so hard not to say anything. Anyway, um, I, the I like that the harness, David. I really like that the harness reflected all of the silver detailing that's happening in Deja's gown. Um, I thought this the one small thing for me. The slit was kind of weird, and it also didn't hit the floor. It's the floor. It's like the back back. It's it the floor in the back. It's the floor in the back. It doesn't take away from my score, which is very good for this game. Um, <laughs> and the performance of it was obviously absolutely fucking incredible. He gave her um, flowers with her pictures in it. I 100% thought that when he got down on one knee at the edge of the stage, I thought he was proposing. And then the way that they cut away, they cut, they cut away and cut back and she was crying. I was like, did they just get engaged and we didn't see it oh boy i wasn't prepared for what happened <laughs> next 
<laughs> I, I love this. Scars. 96. Duh. Full. 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 I think that makes this the uh, highest scoring look of the season so far. Probably. Maybe. I wouldn't know. Neither of you have put your numbers and your <laughs> scores into the document. <laughs> oh, are we bringing that up in, on, on the live air? People yes, going? because I think, well, apparently we're exposing everything today. <laughs> on, the, all of our on, Beyonce, on Beyonce's internet, we're exposing we're, everything today. We're exposing all of our back end stuff, huh? Okay. Apparently. Well, David, we have to put our stuff in the document. <laughs> I will. <laughs> David will do it for me. Thank you. Oh my God. And then last up, Mrs. Tan and I cried. <sighs> I cried because of how gorgeous she looks in this gown. And then I cried because their presentation was so beautiful. And then I cried because she proposed. <laughs> and now he's Mr. Tan. <laughs> I got yeah. so emotional. I thought this was such a good look. This was, it's crazy how big of a step up this was from her first look yes. in this episode. Like she should not have gone home, even if she was in the bottom two or whatever, based on this, because this was so stunning. It's just dripping in jewels. And yeah, I just, sure. It's another silver one, but I just was eating it up. This is my second favorite. Same. Done so well done so well the only thing that distracted me was the panty and i was like oh i can mm, see that panty too. but other than that baby mrs tan looked like she was just straight out of a glitter jewelry factory and they just stuck jewels on her body and she was just like yep here i am and then this long bejeweled cape you know the girl at your high school who you rarely see dressed up because she always comes to school in baggy pants and 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 a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or whatever and she rarely dresses up but then when prom comes around and she puts on this dress and you like whoa I didn't know you was doing all that underneath all them clothes you that's what Miss Miss Tan give me. She's like in this moment, she's coming out of prom looking like just like she's been waiting all year for this moment to show everybody that her style and what she was gonna do for prom. This is beautiful. And then she proposed, and I was like, oh, I cannot be a mess. I'm a thug. I don't cry. I don't cry. Put it back up. Put it back up. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. I did, like you, Logan, thought that they did that to Deja, and we just didn't see it. So I was like, did we miss a proposal? This is right. Weird. I was like, huh? Was like, oh, why would you do that? But then when we showed this, I was like, oh, we didn't miss a proposal because they would, of course, show it. We didn't even know. We didn't miss the proposal. It was beautiful. It was so good. <laughs> 90. How dare you? I gave her 94. How dare you? I might be biased because of the proposal, but I'm giving this a fall. Hmm. <laughs> That's beautiful. That hurt my face to do that. I'm not going to do that anymore. Anyway. Okay. I guess we need to talk about the and David, your theory about the drag has been proven incorrect. Has been debunked. I was going to say it, but you didn't need to say it with so much sass. <laughs> you hurt his feelings. <laughs> okay, he hurt mine earlier when he talked about the harness. What about it? But I said that with a smile. <laughs> You should say it with a smile, Logan. Yeah. David, your theory has been debunked. That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it, bitch. 
can't, I can't with either of you today. Right now. <laughs> oh Lord. What was your theory though, David? So my theory was that um, as they draw names, they don't put them back into the bag well, okay. until they have to. Oh, but okay. the fact, and it, it worked that way for the first four weeks for sure. But then the fact that Mrs. Tan got picked a third time before some people yeah. have gotten picked a second time yeah. uh, proved that that was not the case. Okay. Yes. Good. So in this... Manila has drawn out the uh, the contestants for the... And in this... We have... I'm not going to play it again. <laughs> we have Mrs. Tan, Fiva Fatal, and Deja. Um, and in this, I'm not going to play it because I don't have it up. Silver gowns. It's the battle of the silver gowns. Absolutely. These are all <laughs> the only people who have won a drag dragon oh, no. all season. These three. That's yep. also true. That's very true. <laughs> Um, so they are lip syncing to D Dina Muli, uh, the version by Janine Tenyoso. I love a ballad. I'm a fan of a ballad. This is the best lip sync we've seen on a drag program so far this year. This was so good. This was incredible. This was, I love a ballad. I thought last week was good. Baby, this week, I honestly thought any of the three of them could have won, and one, I would have said yes. Two of them more than the other one for me personally, but any of the three of them could have won, won and I just said, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think this is the week where, like, the weakest of the three was definitely better than the weakest of the three any other drag dagulon that we've seen um because yeah all of them were very good and and we should expect that since they're all winners mm -hmm. uh, from this in previous weeks but yeah i did have a pretty clear ranking personally um but yeah i i these songs are so good i haven't heard i haven't heard any of these songs before but each week I'm like, I really like this song. <laughs> like, and I was really paying attention to the lyrics this time. Mm -hmm. And it, unless I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. It seems like a like kind of like a a breakup song, but then you find out in the end that the person died. That's also I saw that in the lyrics. I don't know whether it was the subtitles we were getting or what. Mm -hmm. I also got that impression. Yeah, I got the impression it was like they were longing for someone who was no longer there. So like, like I will all like it was more like the I will always love you type of like, even though you're not here with me, my heart is with you kind of like longing for someone's song. But I don't if they die. Oh, if it was the thing like they died mm -hmm. and that was the, like they're, 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 this was their song of grief. And it, it reminds me of, like, I don't know if y'all would know this person, but the Aaron Hall, he sang a song called I Miss You. And mm -hmm. that was, like, it was the I song. song of, Lana. Huh? I know that song, Lana. Period. Yeah, but that was the <laughs> But I wasn't doing it to do a reference that you didn't know, but I was going to say why. Oh, I know. I'm just saying, y'all are making references I don't know. David's <laughs> calling me a slut. Like, this episode I, has just been all over the place. I just, I, I, if you would let me finish my ref, my meaning, why I said what I said. No, because remember, Lana, everything has to be about me, apparently. Apparently. And you're making it about you right now. So, okay. you were right. It does have to be about you. It does. <laughs> anyway, back to me. And Start what I was... Back. We're circling oh, back. We're going back to what I was saying. <laughs> Aaron Hawes did a song called I Miss You. And throughout the whole purpose of the song, we just thinking that it was a breakup song because uh, the video was like they broke up. But then to come to find out at the end, she died. And it was like, oh, you're singing I Miss You as in this person is no longer here. So that was what I got from this song that they did at the Drag Daggy Line. I was like, Oh, so they're talking about, like you said, the breakup. But no, 
this person actually is really no longer here. So this grief is going to go on for a while. So yeah, that's what I thought about. But yeah, I I, I do too clearly have my uh, clear three. You know, everybody the order, here. The, the we'll order. three. Yeah, my the order of who was going to. Yeah. I think we might all have the same order. Probably. We might. I would love to see here. Number three. Oh, Number three. One, two, three. Fever. Fever. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. Number two. Number two. One, one two, three. Deja. And number one is this. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. All right, yeah. I for me, I will say my scores for Deja and Mrs. Tan are literally one point apart because I think mm. they both they both conveyed the message of the song in such an, a different but powerful way. Deja with the photo and then taping up the photo and mm-hmm. having like that. I don't know what the photo was. I wish I did know. It was seemingly very emotional for her. and it, She was conveying that. She was conveying that emotion without me knowing what the story was about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Mrs. Tan just, the, it's the face. It's the face. Her face conveys every emotion that she needs to for whatever she's doing. And those are the kind of lip syncers that I love where I, I may not know what the song necessarily means, but I'm getting every emotion that I need to just from your face. Mm-hmm. And just from the way that you're emoting in this. And then at the very end, when she went and she sat on the step and she grabbed the thing and then the umbrella with the confetti, I was like, girl. Yeah. She gave us the performance and she gave us the the emotion of the yeah. song. Like, yeah, everything. And yeah. she won. And she what won. About? We got yeah. other things to talk about really, really quickly before we talk about the results. But, because mm-hmm. we go backstage mm-hmm. and we're talking and we're doing our thing. And then Sassa Girl of everyone goes, who should go home tonight? And why? And everyone says FIFA. Yeah. It was a pile. Everyone of says FIFA. Everyone. And I think this was a very, very overall one overall one of the strongest packages we've seen this season from everyone. Mm-hmm. No one fully faltered this week. But if I were to rank someone in six for this week, it would have been FIFA. Yeah, I I think her highest high of the night was lower than everybody else's highest high. Mm-hmm. Of the night. Mm-hmm. I don't think she had the worst look of the night. <laughs> but no, you made that very clear with your 45. Yeah. Um but the proposal really outweighed the basic bodysuit. So like in the end, eh, you know. <laughs> that True. silver dress outweighed the <laughs> bodysuit. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, she put all of her time and effort for this week into the silver dress, obviously, and claiming the proposal. David, she had three things to do this week. Everybody else only had two things to do this week. She had to come <laughs> up with a theme wear, a main drag, and plan a proposal. Okay, David. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so cut her a little slack. <laughs> yes. Um, another thing <laughs> we got uh, Russia Fox talking about being nervous this week, and everybody's like, "You always say you're nervous every week." But you're a liar. <laughs> so yeah, they they definitely it's it's interesting. I feel like Russia is kind of becoming the new like public enemy now that Gene is gone. I don't get that. Yeah. Well weird. Um the okay. only other thing that we saw that was of note to me before we go back to the stage was Mrs. Tan talking about how she's nervous. Um because she knows <laughs> she knows that Deja's look was much better than hers mm-hmm. um, for the tennis look. So yeah. she, she knows that that could put her at risk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so we go back to the stage and obviously Mrs. Tan uh, is the winner. Of the- and as the winner, of the- she's, she decides that she's nervous about the rankings this week, but she's in her gut. Her gut is telling her to give away her immunity. And I said, no! Me too. I Mrs. Tan. 
I screamed. I screamed. I was like, if this is how Mrs. Tan goes home. No. 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 I screamed and I was like, no, girl, no. Don't do that. No. 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 I don't think you last, but I don't. Uh, I don't want to risk it because there, there's a universe where maybe you are. I'm about to say, you earn that immunity. You take it. Take it. You've won every drug Jagulon you've been in. Take the okay. immunity, girl. I needed her to cut off Manila like she did with the first one. I'm using immunity. Right. I needed the- it's for me. 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 Like, oh um, but we have to put a pin yeah. in that because uh, <laughs> oh then we find out that the top three of the week um, are Moy, Deja, and Russia. And Russia. Mm-hmm. And we find out that the winner of this week. Is Deja deserve. deserve? Deserve, deserve. She can only be deserve. first or fourth. There's no in between. <laughs> deserve, deserved. Period. I hope she's not fourth next week. Me too. Because that would mean she's going home. Um, and uh, so we are left with our bottom three of Mrs. Tan, Siva, and Margot. My stomach was in my butt at this moment. I was oh, saying, I was like, no, <gasps> no. Okay, sorry. So, Mrs. Tan decides that she's going to use her immunity on Margot, <gasps> which was not surprising to me at all because no, that, no, that makes sense. No. And Margot replies with, I would like to decline. And then. Sends herself home. <sighs> Ooh, baby, I was like, wait, wait, what? She sent what? herself <laughs> home. She said, I've been at the bottom way too many times. And I don't think it is right for me to take a spot from any of these girls. They should be here. So I am going to decline the immunity and I'm going to go. And everybody in the back is like, can she do that? Is that allowed? My (laughs) favorite part of this is when she declines immunity before she says she's going home. Sassa girl in the back is like, can I have it? Right. (laughs) I love Sassa girl. I love Sassa girl so much. It's so great. I was like, (sighs) okay, what? What? Like, I was nervous for Mrs. Tan, and I was glad that it wasn't her, but I was like, but Marco, you did so well this week. You did so good this week. Like, according to my score, she was one of the tops this week. Like, what? Oh, I was so, oh, man. Before, before she, um, before she sends herself home, I was like, Okay, so does that mean Mrs. Tan can keep the immunity for herself, or does she have to give it to Fiva? And then in that case, oh God, are Margot's scores higher than Mrs. Tan? Oh dear God, is Mrs. Tan going home? Like there were so many emotions that just like swirled through my brain. It was like Mrs. Tan can't go home here. No. Oh no no. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that. Um... This episode, like I said, it felt so pure. And I was really like halfway through, I was like, please let this be a non-elimination. Me too. It just felt like after everything we saw in this episode, to just have an elimination the standard way just would feel like a little like but while I'm sad, Margot left. She's on my team. Yes. I felt like the way she went out and the fact that she was sacrificing herself specifically. For Fiva, who she felt like was probably going to leave after mm-hmm. one stumble here. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was so like pure, still pure. noble, and I really respect it. And I hope nobody's giving her any sort of hate or any sort of rude comments about her deciding to, to drop out of the game. Because oh. she did it in the most beautiful way, I thought. I agree. I think this was... It fit this episode. Like, it was the most pure way for somebody to leave a show 
saving, being very selfless and giving up her spot for someone who she felt was in danger, knowing that she wasn't doing well in this competition. Like it's, 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 it's so nice to know yourself. Like I'm just taking up this space and I'm not doing as well as I thought I was. This isn't working out for me. But she also was like, this isn't the end for me. This show isn't the end. This show is just the beginning. I just don't feel like any of these girls should go home right now. And it's my time. And if you go do that after such an amazing episode like this was, that's just, it just added to Cherry to the pureness and innocence and sweetness and just goodness of this episode. Like, it was just like, as like you said, as sad as I was, I was sad to see Margot go because I was like, she did so well. But the fact that she did it so purely, it was so beautiful. And I was just like, oh, this was such a good episode all the way through from beginning Mm -hmm. all the way to the end. It was good. It was good. This was my favorite episode of Dragged In this season. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. I'm like, she's definitely not going to get any hate from me over here. Absolutely. I I love, I loved getting to know Margot on the show. I think her... I I just really enjoy her, and I'm I'm sad to see her go. And wait, oh, I'm sorry. And then even to add on top of the goodness, she walked out and she said, "Manila, be good to these girls." Like that is how pure and good she is in this episode. Like even the the goodbye was just like, "Look after these girls. Be good mm-hmm. to them. Be as." Yeah. Uh, Sure if Manila ever overload. steps down as drag den host, give it to Margot, honestly. <sighs> Pure overload. Oh, I just can't. We love you, Margot. Thank you for, I guess, thank you for going home so that Mrs. Tan didn't. I don't know. <laughs> thank you for being so sweet about it. Yes. Because yes. I know Fiva is like, thank you. So you're Yeah. Because right. Fiva was like, oh, I'm going home. Okay, I'm going home. In this gorgeous gown, but I'm going home. Like. <laughs> right. Yes. <sighs> okay, David. Okay, we can get this out of the way quickly. Mm-hmm. So, in last place right now is Logan with 20 points. Mm-hmm. And then it's pretty close between me and Lana. There's only one and a half points difference mm-hmm. between the two of us. So, with 42 points is Lana catching up to me, and I have 43.5. Points. All right, just one more win. I need two more wins. I need and wins. now we're we're both down to two people, and then Logan has one person left who's got I great momentum. Well, I, got you. I can still win. Well, I got you. That's actually impossible. Moi and Moy, we're gonna win. <laughs> Can I just like inherit the Gene Veloke points? No kidding. Yes, then you would have 27 points and still be in last place. <laughs> you still can't win. I'm still in it. <laughs> if she wins every episode and wins the season and gets Miss Congeniality, I have a chance. No, I don't. I can't win. <laughs> it's fine. I'm doing very well in other drafts. So right. literally right now, it's either I'm flopping or I'm leading by a significant margin. There's no in between. Yeah. And I think Lon is going to pass me next week for sure. Because we got to talk about this preview yes. for next week. Double elimination. We can lose a whole team, David. We could. we could lose a whole team. Yeah, we could lose a whole team. It could be mine. Okay. That'd be very easy, but we only need one elimination to lose your team. But okay, yeah, we got it, Lana. <laughs> a double elimination could might be a David, one of us out of the whole team. I hope so. I hope it does. Because then I have even more of a chance to win. Yeah. I mean, they, either... yeah, yeah, he just wants you to get out the competition. He's just trying yeah. to get you out, just like that. I'm trying to get you out too, Lana. No, you said what you said, David. Anyway, either, no, I did uh, not say David. Either one of us will be completely out, or mm-hmm. we will each have one person left in the top it's, three. Yep, we, that could happen too. Somebody's still in the game. <laughs> Somebody's not in the game. <laughs> I'm still here. 
I hate Could y'all imagine if Moy wins the season? <laughs> and then I absolutely don't win I don't the how, I don't know how somebody hating from outside of the club, they can't even get in. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> don't let me don't let me wrap the whole thing because I can. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. But we won't. <sighs> But, that's mm-hmm. for that's for another time. That's for another um, time. Double elimination, and I know David wants to talk about this one part specifically because he's gooped and gagged over Miss Russia Fox. So. Russia, Russia is everything to me. <laughs> we saw her in this preview, being like, "If I am to leave this week, I don't want to go. In fact, if I'm supposed to leave, I'm not going to go. I'm gonna stay." <laughs> And I'm like, oh, okay. I'm not going to leave. I was like, girl, the fuck? She's like, I'm going to overrule any judgments you all make against me. I was like, I don't know what the content is or if she was saying this in jest. But um, now I can't wait to next week because if she say that junk and talk about some she ain't leaving and she actually is eliminated, I'm be like, girl, if you don't get your butt off that stage, go Um, home. I will live for it. If they have to pull out like that, that like little wire, the little uh, no. you know, ah. bag man come and drag there her away. <laughs> I don't think she'd be mad at that though. Let's be honest. I but. mean, I want the bag man to drag me away. Uh, well, That's thank funny. you for joining us for what it was not our shortest episode of Drag Den ever. Nope. I don't know. Why we, we can't. Can we those. can't. We can't spend under. We can't spend and like anything other than about two hours talking about this show because there's just so much to talk about. Yeah, and this was an eventful episode. Right. I don't know why we even claim to try to do short episodes when it comes to this. I don't even know why we do that. Full transparency to everyone, it is currently 12.30 a.m. for Lana and David, and it is 11.30 p.m. Can I work at 8? Yep, you do. And I gotta be up early because I have to go get a COVID booster. (laughs) So, thank you Good for you, Lana. <laughs> Thankfully, we have a day off of podcasting up here. But thank you for joining us for this episode of Drag Den. Please let us know in the comments all of your thoughts because you all always do, and we sincerely appreciate all of your support over here. Um, uh, make sure to subscribe to both of our other channels as well for almost all things reality TV and almost all things Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, if you would like to become a member of the channel and join the Tea Room, where eventually. I think we had maybe briefly talked about doing a refilled series on the membership for Dragged In Season 1. I would really like to do that. Mm-hmm. Down the line. Down the line. We got to finish this season, maybe take a little bit of a break from, from Drag Den. <laughs> and maybe if we have a little bit of a break with other drag series later on in the year, we'll do uh, Dragged In Season 1. So if you want to become a member of the channel and see when we do all of our lovely, wonderful content, including... Uh, coverage of Drag Race Philippines Season 1 by the Resident Evil Diva Lana. Make sure to hit the join button over here on our channel here, or go to Patreon, same content, different platform. All those links will be down in the description below. While you're down in the description, make sure to follow us on our socials at the Cut Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You could go follow David, Lana, and myself on Twitter, or you're all finding our Instagram, so I might as well just start putting our Instagrams in there too, because now they found my Instagram, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yes, I uh, see more people on my Instagram. I'm like, yeah, me yeah. too. Let me <laughs> follow my Instagram. It's right there. You see it right there. Mine is not, but I'll probably start putting it. And you could also go get our merch, including when I limited to Cut Mug down below as well. And with all that being said, cheers. Cheers. And we thank thank you. you. Deserve, deserve. Thank you. (laughs) Dragagulana.